Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Let us see some checklist for obstetric abdominal examination. This is very important for medical students, for undergraduate, postgraduate, also for professor of obstetrics and gynecology, how to, to do check for uh, medical students while he is doing obstetric abdominal examination. So we need this checklist importantly as a doctor, as a medical student also. Okay. The checklist in some countries, they are in some faculties, they are using the pass or fill. Okay. In others, they are using the grades or score. So whatever pass or fail or graded score, we should know the checklist for obstetric abdominal examination. Let us start with the first. First, when you are asked to do obstetric abdominal examination, wash your hands or use alcohol if washing your hand is not available, so use alcohol as an alternative, okay? Also, sometimes in some circumstances, you may need PPE. Okay. Then introduce yourself to the patients, including your name and rule. You can say, uh, I'm John, I'm a medical student in the sixth year. I'm a resident of obstetrician in the department. Okay. So tell the patient about yourself and what you are going to do. I'm, uh, I was asked to do a uh, obstetric abdominal examination for you. Okay. So this is how to introduce yourself to the patient, including your name and rule. Also ask the patient about her name and date of birth to know her age and to be friendly with her. Then briefly explain what the examination will involve using patient friendly language as this reduce anxiety and enhances cooperation. You can say I'm going to examine your abdomen by inspection first to evaluate certain signs on the scan. Then I'm going to do palpation for the uterus to know the the the, the lie of the baby, the presentation of the baby. Also, I'm going to do some measures like synthesis fundal height. Also, I'm going to do auscultation to the fetal heart to know the fetal heart rate. Okay? Simply, in a simple language, explain to the patient the steps you are going to do. Okay? Then, Gain consent to proceed with examination, either verbal or written consent. Verbal may be enough. Then provide the patient with the opportunity to pass urine before the examination. Prepare equipment that you may need. You may need measuring tape, venar stethoscope or handheld Doppler, ultrasound, tonicate, whatever. So prepare your equipment before you are doing the examination. Then position the patient supine on the clinical examination couch with the head of the bed raised to 15 degree. And it's better to put a small pillow on her right side. Okay? Okay. What else? Provision of privacy. Very important, really. A curtain in examination room is important. Please respect the privacy of the patient, confidentiality and dignity. Okay? And patient is entitled to have chaperone. Chaperone may be formal or informal. Somebody accompanied 
common hair maybe also another uh, one from medical staff by like nursing staff okay then adequately expose the patient abdomen for the examination from the pubic surfaces to the zephyster okay and you should offer a blanket to allow exposure only when required okay so for abdominal examination we need to expose from zip sternum to pubic surface then ask the patient if she has any pain before proceeding with the clinical examination what is the site of pain what is the type of pain okay Position the patient appropriately for abdominal inspection. Understand that on the right side of the patient, inspect the abdomen closely to see what? To see the shape of the abdomen. If you usually enlarge it, longitudinal diameter is bigger than the transverse diameter, as longitudinal lie, or maybe the transverse diameter is longer than longitudinal diameter. The abdomen is a void, a round shape, okay? The flanks are full or not? Is there any scar of previous operation like cesarean section, lower transverse scar? And you should describe the scar as regard the size of the scar. How long? 10 centimeter, 7 centimeter, and so on. Scar for cesarean is lower transverse one, or scar for laparoscopy, for example, one at the umbilical region and another two ports, two iliac fossa, sorry, in two iliac region. So you should describe the scar as regard to the site, the size, the diameter of the scar, the uh, is there any pigmentation? Is there is keloid healed by primary intention or secondary intention? So, this is very important. Also, any pigmentation like linea negra, stray, rubra, alba, any visible mass, any dilated vein. What about the umbilicus shifted upward, centralized, shifted downward? Of course, we're expecting that the pregnant uterus is a pelvic abdominal, so umbilicus will be shifted upward. Is the umbilicus is inverted, flat or reverted? Is there is any hernia at the umbilicus? Is there any pigmentation, discharge, inflammation, scar? Okay. Also, inspect the sites of hernia. And if there is any divergation of recti, all these items in inspection of the abdomen. Then, palpate the nine region of the abdomen for tenderness or masses. Gently try to palpate the nine area of the abdomen with the palmar surface of the hand or fingers. In a depth, about one centimeter trying to find any tenderness or any superficial mass of course with advanced pregnancy palpation of the abdominal organ by deep palpation is difficult then you are going to do obstetric examination palpate the fundal level by the ulnar border of the left hand while the right hand do centralization to the uterus until you find the resistance of the fundus then do a mark at this side then by tab measure try to measure the symphysis fundal height okay symphysial fundal height by tab measure and to put the tab the, the graded one towards the abdomen so you cannot see the grades ok 
okay? Why? To avoid piles. Until you measure, then expose to see how centimeter. Of course, after 24 weeks, same physics. Fundal height equal to gestational age in weeks plus or minus two. Okay? Two centimeter or two weeks. Okay? Plus or minus two. Okay? Okay. Then do fundal grab by both hands, trying to palpate which part of the fetus in the fundus. By the palmar surface also of each hand, gently try to feel the fetal part occupying the fundus. Then do umbilical grip or lateral grip to define the back of the baby. Is the back to the right or to the left, anterior or posterior or transverse? Okay. Then do first pelvic grip with one hand, with outstretched hand, over the lower uterine segment, just above the symphysis, pubis. Try to feel which fetal pool occupying the lower uterine segment. If it, if it is phallic or breech, and if it is cephalic, it will be hard, round, tender, Sometimes palatable, okay, smooth. While if it is breech, it will be irregular, soft, not tender, not palatable. Okay, then do the second pelvic grip. The second pelvic grip using two hands applied in the lower abdomen. Try to palpate the abdomen inward, forward. And immediately trying to feel the sense spot and the oxygen. What is the aim? The aim is to define the fetal head attitude. If the sense spot and the oxygen at the same level, the head is deflexed. If the sense spot is higher, the head is flexed. If the sense spot is lower, the head is extended. Okay? First pelvic grip and second pelvic grip also called pelvic grip. Okay. And from the pelvic grips also first and second pelvic grip you can define if the head is engaged or not using rule of fifths to evaluate engagement of the head. One finger equal to two centimeter above the symphysis equal to one fifth of the head. So if I feel Two fifths of the head or less, the head is engaged. If three fifths or more, the head is not engaged during abdominal examination. How can I measure? By applying finger breadth above the symphysis. If two finger, this is two fifths. If three finger, this is three fifths. Okay? So, if only two-fifths of the head or less is felt abdominally, the head is engaged. Okay? Then go to the next point to listen to the fetal heartbeat using the available methods like Pinard's stethoscope or Doppler ultrasound sonicate. Okay? And don't forget to palpate the maternal pulse, maternal radial pulse at the same time. So not to be confused with the maternal pulse as if it is the fetal heart B. Okay? Of course, we know the difference. The baby normal fetal heart rate between 110 up to 160. While the maternal pulse from 60 to 90 per minute. So, of course, there is a big difference. So if you did Palpation of the maternal pulse while you are listening to the fetal heart beat by Pinard stethoscope, you will find the difference. Okay? Don't miss this point. Then explain to the patient that the examination is now finished and to tell her simply the finding and answer any question raised by her. Thank the patient for her time and 
for being cooperative, then wash your hand, then summarize your finding. Summarize your finding, for example, you can say Mrs. Dina, 25 years old, she is prime gravida, symphysis fundal height 34 weeks, gestational age, longitudinal lie, vertex presentation, the head is well flexed and not engaged, fetal heart rate 140 per minute. Okay, this is how to summarize your finding, for example. Then lastly, suggest further assessment. For example, you may need obstetric ultrasound for certain reason. Okay, to confirm the gestational age, to confirm the live presentation position, to confirm that the baby is doing well. Okay, so further assessment may be needed. You may need also urine analysis for patient suggested to be preeclampsia, has hypertension, you may ask for rotinuria, albumin in urine. You may ask for blood sugar because you are suspecting gestational diabetes. Okay? Because there is polyhydramnus or something like that. So you may need further assessment. So you should suggest further assessment at the end. This is the end of checklist for obstetric abdominal examination. I hope it is clear enough and, and I hope it is helpful for all of you. Thank you, everybody. This is my book published in Amazon textbook of obstetric textbook of gynecology contraception handbook the multiple choice book. This is my site on Amazon and my site on YouTube and my site on Blogspot. Thank you everybody. Wishing you the best.